How do you know you are real? No, seriously. How do you know you can see me right now? The reason why that is the case is because these lights, they are bouncing light off of my skin. Your retina is interpreting the signals and telling you that you see an image. You are playing with your phone with your sense of touch. My voice is compressing the air, and therefore you can, hear, you can hear me. Never mind the lunch you had this afternoon. Why you enjoy it is because of the chemical compounds that are in this food. We as a civilization, we have succeeded in digitizing sound, touch, and sight. Smell and taste is still beyond us, but let's leave that a little bit for later. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to hear about AI today, in case it's not been mentioned enough. I want you to know that all of these senses, all of these signals that your body is processing, is being processed by the most powerful machine in the known universe. In fact, in your brain, you have about 100 billion. That is 100 billion GPU-like units constantly processing signals. You have more than 600 trillion synapses that are constantly processing information. You are working with language, video, sound, and touch. This is your brain's spec sheet. So it is a fair thing to say that human beings have solved general intelligence. And the machine that has solved general intelligence is in your brain. Now, we as human beings, we do want to build artificial general intelligence. Why do we want to do this? Because it makes our lives richer. Sure, there are problems that we can solve as human beings, but imagine a world where AI or general intelligence is helping us to diagnose disease, keeping our ports safe, helping us to design new kinds of tastes. What are the parts lists for this artificial general intelligence? Now, we have chatbots that you can call intelligent. But is all our intelligence really in language? What about when you talk to somebody and they just flick their face? and you automatically know what they mean. Is what we represent in the cyberspace, is all of it really in the real world? In fact, to get more concrete about this question, if I wanted to simulate one centimeter cube of the human brain, one centimeter cube is year high, Yay high. I would need a chip the size of two basketball courts. That's how powerful our brain is. So if our brains are so powerful, and the machines that make us up are so powerful, why don't we build with it? Why don't we build with biology? Why don't we build a brain from the ground up? That's precisely what Kuniko, my company, does. We are based out there in Silicon Valley, and we are building a brain from the ground up. So, our goal one day is to have autonomous agents that can think, talk, act in an ethical way like we do. So, what are the part lists for building this artificial general intelligence that is built on a new kind of substrate. We have four guiding principles for us. The first one 
is to build small brain circuits from scratch. That means we take these little cells, these 100 billion cells I told you about, we begin to build a new kind of circuit out of it. Number two, we are driven by building with biology. That means we build already of the materials that are around us. Number three, we want to help address needs that are real in the real world. And lastly, we prioritize the needs of the many. Our first goal is to map all the smells that touch human life. From disease diagnostics, to food, to security, and many more. To solve the problem of smell, because we human beings, to date, we have not been able to build a smell processor. It's the reason why if you're eating pizza in a restaurant and you call your family, you cannot say, oh, this is the smell of pizza. Can you smell it on the other side? But this is a problem that nature has solved in a very elegant way. We take these brain cells, we genetically modify them to express the same receptors to function the same way as a dog's nose will work, for instance. We make these new kind of chips that last about 30 days that you can put into one of our devices. And it's modeled after the dog's nose. So, we have built a machine that allows you to detect smell at an unprecedented scale. What is it useful for? One of our first deployments that we have deployed in California is the idea that you can walk from the curbside in an airport into the aircraft without any obvious security. In fact, we took our technology and we went head to head in trial with the actual dog. The dog was detecting at about 58% accuracy. Out of 114 trials, we did not get a single false positive or a single false negative. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for the first time anywhere in the world, I present to you, for the first time here in Doha, in Qatar, you are going to see a machine that is part biology and part machine. Nowhere else in the world has this been shown before. And here, my team, so what you're seeing here is, so the, 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 the dog itself is not, built by our, is not built by our company. But on the top of this dog, you have a brain or a smell processor that is made with actual biological cells. This has never, ever been done anywhere before. Now, they are going to show, can you smell it and tell us, describe to them what you're smelling when you smell the compound, please. It's, it's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> but what does it smell like? How would you describe it? Uh, the, I, I can smell a bit of apple, is it? It's, it's essentially the smell of green peas. And now we are going to use this biology to detect the smell of this green piece. Can you present it, please? Yes. Just present it. So what she's doing is she's presenting the smell of what is in that bowl. She's presenting it to the dog. It's a robot dog, and you can see on the screen can you show the screen? You can see the detection event. You will see the lines shoot up. So you see the detection event. Can you show the screen, please? Do you see it? So this is the line going up. So for the first time, we have demonstrated now for the whole world to see. Outside of a laboratory, we are showing a machine that is part animal and part machine that is detecting smell in real time. And feel free to tweet about it. <laughs>
Thank you. Now, for most people, for most people, they don't realize that every day you deal with smell more than you deal with vision or you deal with touch. In fact, how you pick your friends is, large, is influenced by their sense of how your friends smell. So the application that really excites me about this company is the idea that we can grant superpowers to doctors. In this world today, in Qatar, you're lucky. You have a great healthcare system. You can see doctors whenever you want. That is not the same. That's not true for everyone in the world. We cannot make doctors fast enough. And we cannot build hospitals fast enough. So what do we do? We have to do more with less. One thing that excites me is the idea of giving doctors superpowers that they can constantly diagnose their patients. So what does a doctor do? A doctor essentially, when you, come to, when you go to the hospital, you're connected to a lot of machines. They take the data, the doctor looks at the data and makes a judgment on your state of health and intervenes. What if we could turn your bathroom into a healthcare data center? You go into your bathroom, you do your business, we analyze all the chemical compounds you're given off, and we can send this data directly to your doctor. And we have already completed the first phase of the clinical trials. We have already demonstrated that we can detect COVID, for instance. So, as a company, we make three things. We make those chips that, I showed, that we showed you earlier. We make a reader, and of course, we are building the largest smell data anywhere in the world in Silicon Valley. I told you earlier that our goal is to, is to make or build a brain from the ground up. So how exactly are we doing this? So for something extra, we believe to build AGI from the brain using biological cells, three things have to be satisfied. The ability to teach these brain cells, the ability to give them structure, and the ability to design them in three dimensions. And this is something we've already done. We are building already cells, or we are building architectures that in under 60 seconds, you can teach them to learn something. You can teach those machines, you can teach them to remember things, and you can teach them to forget things as well. Already, we are building three-dimensional architectures. And these three-dimensional architectures shows that we can really build large systems out of this. And we can build also complicated neural circuits out of these brain cells. I believe technology is about people. I fundamentally believe this. So we are building a community of end users and technology integrators. We are here in Doha for the next couple of days. Feel free to reach out to us and learn more about our vision at Koniku to build brains from scratch. Thank you very much.